Hey guys, Michael23B here, and this is my smart, fully automatic bulk potion brewing machine. That's right, it's smart not only because it has the potion recipes programmed into it, but it can also make anywhere from 3 to 27 potions at a time, and it can detect when an ingredient runs out, so it only makes as many potions as there are ingredients for. It has a selector panel with all the potions you could need, as well as the potion modifiers. It has an item sorter for inputting your ingredients. It has a glass bottle input for automatically making the water bottles. It has blaze powder fuel input and more. Now, this certainly has been a long awaited video as I originally made my first potion brewing machine a year and a half ago. And I actually made this one not long after that. Uh, but I just never got around to making a video about it. So here we are. This machine is definitely a lot bigger, a lot more complicated, uh, but I think that's justified given what it does. So let me break it down for you. Let me give you a demonstration. And uh, yeah, here we go. So this is the selector panel. We have all of our potions here. We have night vision, invisibility, leaping, fire resistance, swiftness, slowness, water breathing, Healing, harming, poison, regeneration, strength, weakness, and slow falling. And we can select any of these that we want, and the light will turn on when we right click the note block. We can select this one instead, and that light turns off, it goes down to here. Or select this one, or select this one, or select fire resistance. And uh, it's important not to spam, like not to click the note blocks too quickly, but for the most part, it's pretty quick in switching. Um, and yeah, we also have our modifiers over here. We have duration, strength, splash, and lingering. Uh, and the interesting thing about this panel is that we can, you know, we can select whatever modifier we want. We can make our fire resistance longer, uh, but we can't make it stronger. So glowstone doesn't apply to fire resistance. And similarly, there's a few potions here that can't have redstone applied to it. There's a few potions here that can't have glowstone applied to it, so I won't be able to click and enable glowstone for this one. Uh, but I can enable redstone. Then we have our splash potion. We can make a splash potion with the gunpowder. And we can also make it lingering by using the dragon's breath. Uh, but the other thing about this is that we can't enable dragon's breath without enabling the gunpowder. So if I try to disable the gunpowder, it's going to disable the uh, Dragon's Breath as well, because uh, in order to use Dragon's Breath, you also need the gunpowder. So, say I try to activate that, it's going to activate the gunpowder as well. So, yeah, pretty nice. But I'm going to turn that off. So, let's make a, uh, a long fire resistance potion uh, with Splash. Um, so, here also is our panel for selecting how many potions we want. So we can select 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, or 27 just by turning the arrow. So I can make 12 by doing that. I can also make 27 by turning on the lever and that just overrides whatever, whatever is up here. Uh, but let's make 12 for now. We have our glass bottles that we can input into the chest. We can put blaze powder in there. Um, and we have our system ready light. So uh, this light right here will tell us when the system is ready to make a potion. And unless this light is already on, I won't be able to make any potions. So why can't I make a potion? Well, let's see. We have some ingredients here. Most of these ingredients are stocked, uh, but it looks like our gunpowder and our magma cream is out. So let's go ahead and input these into the system. I'm just going to throw some in here. And that runs straight to the item sorter. And here in a moment, this light will turn on, telling us the system is ready. You can see those lights turned on, and this light's turned on, and we're ready. So let's go ahead. You hear a nice little jingle, and this light starts going back and forth, telling us that the potions are brewing. And uh, of course, there are several potions, or each potion here takes a different amount of time to brew. So some require more ingredients to brew them, and some require less. Of course, it also depends on how many of these you're using. So it's variable in how long it takes to output, uh, but 
if you're doing like three potions or doing 27 potions, it doesn't matter how many uh, potions you're doing. There's no difference uh, in, in that regard. Um, but yeah, let's just wait a little bit and we'll have our potions output. So here you can see the brewing stands. They have our fire resistance potions. It's currently putting the redstone dust in. And we also have the gunpowder that will go in. And uh, these lights, you can actually see they just reset, but there were four of them off, saying that uh, there's four brewing stands that are currently in use. And that makes the 12 potions that we want. And here in a moment, uh, the system will detect that everything is done brewing. So that should be done. And then you'll see that the dropper starts dispensing them out. There's all our potions going. And we hear a nice little jingle again. And let's go ahead and look in the potion output. And we have our 12 fire resistance splash potions with eight minutes. Pretty nice. All right, so let's go ahead and do a different potion combination. So we're gonna make 27 potions. Uh, let's use the dragon's breath this time. So we'll make a long uh, lingering potion. Uh, and let's do invisibility. So this is arguably the longest one uh, because it uses the most ingredients. And it looks like the system is ready. So we're gonna go ahead and click it. And here in a bit, we'll have 27 potions output to the chest. So let's go back here into this whole mess and you'll see this is where our ingredients de get distributed. You'll see these ingredients have got loaded in. And here in a moment, we'll start dispersing. And you can see because all the lamps are off, uh, there's no power going to any of these hoppers, which allows ingredients to get distributed to all nine of these brewing stands. And you just heard them all doing a brew there. We've got the water balls, the awkward potions, golden carrots. We've got all our ingredients up here. And this hopper out here is actually detecting that this still has ingredients in it. It's setting an output to here. It has a hopper clock. It has another hopper clock. Um, and yeah, this just basically makes sure that the system still knows when it's brewing and once it's done brewing or once there's no more items in this um, the hopper clock kind of runs out and it tells the system that uh, the machine is done so we'll just wait for these to finish brewing all right and here they come let's go out boing 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 they start getting dispensed by the dropper and they go up to our potion output Let's take a look, getting loaded in. And just like that, we have 27 lingering potions of invisibility. All right, now I just have one more example to show you. I'm going to select a fire resistance potion, no modifiers, and let's try and make 27 of them. Um, but the system isn't ready yet, so we're gonna go ahead and fill those magma creams. I'm gonna go in here manually. And instead of inputting all of these, I'm just going to input a few. So let's do five of them like that. And then we'll go ahead over here. And so it's going to try and brew 27 potions, but it's going to realize that there's only five magma cream and thus it's only going to be able to unlock five of the brewing stands. So let's go and see that in action. So you'll hear the tick. It ticks five times, but it doesn't tick any more than that. And as you can see, only five of these lights turned off, meaning five of the brewing stands uh, are enabled. And uh, yeah, it doesn't do any more than that because we only had the five magma cream. And as you can see, it's distributing the items. And we now have our five brewing stands doing uh, fire resistance potions, we have the nether wart, we have the magma cream, and so yeah, those will get done brewing in just a second, uh, but yes, even though we detected, or sorry, even though we selected 27 potions, uh, we should only get uh, 15 potions in the output because of the limit on the magma cream. So we just wait a little bit, you can hear them splashing, and there we go. 
Here's our potion output. And just as expected, we only get 15 of these potions instead of 27. Pretty nice. All right, now I won't be brewing any more of these potions right now, uh, but I do have an extra little tidbit. Uh, let's select healing right here. And let's select glowstone. And let's say I had the glowstone selected and I switch back to fire resistance or any potion that can't have uh, glowstone applied. I'll click that and you see we hear a little note block sound and the glowstone gets deactivated. And we can say activate redstone if we want. Now if we switch back to healing or harming or whatever, you see the redstone gets automatically deselected because that's not a valid uh, modifier that can be applied to that potion. So yeah, it's kind of smart. This whole machine is kind of smart in that way too. So it doesn't allow um, non-valid recipes to happen. All right, so let's break down how this machine actually works. So I know this looks quite complicated, uh, but I'll try and break it down for you as simply as I can. Uh, but first off, if you're still watching this at this point, that means you're really interested and go ahead and leave a like on the video. And uh, if you're not, go ahead and subscribe. That would really help. Let's reach 500 subscribers as soon as we can. That would be very nice. So thank you very much. Uh, so let's break it down. So first of all, this is where our selector panel is. And the first part of the selector panel is actually um, getting that to work. And the way the selector panel works is that we have these hopper pairs. And in each one of them, there's one stack of wall item. It doesn't have to be emerald. Um, but the current thing that's selected, you can see there's a block up here, and we have the Swiftness Potion selected. So we have no item in here, instead it's over here, and that tells us it's selected. And yeah, the way this whole selector panel works is that each time, each time you right click a note block, each time you input an option, it goes into the system, it resets um, all the hoppers, both on the top and on the bottom down here. Um, and then after it resets, one of the items, whichever one that you selected, will get shifted to the back hopper. And that is currently what's selected. Um, and over here is where our programming happens. So this is where um, each potion has its recipe um, encoded with observers. So you'll see I have a book with all of the different recipes um, telling it which ingredients go to which potion. And then as you can see, we have hoppers here, so let's say for, uh, this is night vision, so we have this going to this one, and this goes to, this goes out here, and this is the uh, nether wart. You can see we have all of our droppers here, each one uh, with each ingredient. And then over here we have the modifiers, like that. And so each different recipe, or sorry, each different ingredient can be targeted uh, by the programmed rails over here and observers. So again, for night vision, we have that that going into this rail, triggering the nether wart. And then we also have night vision triggering this, and it goes out to here, and that triggers the uh, golden carrots. And then that's it for that recipe. And then of course each other recipe triggers their own different uh, ingredients. And on the bottom we also have the programming. So whichever potion is selected it will trigger one of these rails and that will trigger um, whatever ingredients that it needs to out to here. And when I say trigger I mean it actually triggers uh, these droppers. So this is basically another selector panel so it's uh, selecting which ingredients it wants to target. So currently we have uh, these two being turned on and that goes out into the pistons it fires these target blocks down and then we have this line so this line is where the clock actually happens for dispensing items um, so when we want to make potions this uh, redstone line turns on it makes a clock and it dispenses as many potions or it dispenses as many ingredients as we need so um, if we're making three potions, it will only trigger once, dispensing one ingredient each, um, and so on and so forth. Um, and then it gets dispensed out into the barrels. And I know um, hopper update order can be a bit tricky, but I've specifically 
made sure that this works um, no matter what. So after all the items get dispensed, they go into this hopper chain. They go through here and this hopper chain uh, is continually detecting uh, when there's ingredients coming through and that allows us to wait until all the ingredients come through and they come into this chest. And once there's no more items coming through the hopper chain, um, after a little while the chest gets uh, output onto the rail and it starts dispersing its items. And uh, meanwhile, while the chest is getting loaded, this is actually, this is the redstone line is decreasing in signal strength. Um, so if one of these lights turns off, that means we're making three potions. If two of these lights turns off, that means we're making six potions. So, and so on and so forth. That all depends on how many potions you've selected on the selector panel. And then once that is all done, once all the ingredients are dispersed, it starts making the potions. Uh, this comparator detects while there's still ingredients in the system. And then it triggers this uh, hopper clock. It allows this to turn on. Um, and all these items flow over to here. Um, and then this also triggers this, which allows these items to flow over to here. And <laughs> at this point, you're probably lost. Um, this is getting a lot more complicated. Um, but yeah, once the items are gone from the hopper, that allows the hopper chain or the hopper timer to uh, untrigger and all the items start flowing back. And once all the items in both of these have flowed back, then uh, that will mean that the potion is done brewing and allow that allows the system to dispense the items to the output and it also allows the um, all the other things to reset as well so coming back and looking at this you can see it's kind of like a barrel shape it's kind of like an oval so this is where all the potion making happens inside the barrel um, and then of course we have our item inputs. This is where our item filters are. We have each item and these filter items. So when you want to put items into the system, it goes through this hopper stream, or sorry, water stream, and it goes into the item sorter and it just recycles back and forth until all the items have got put in. Um, and yeah. We also have the rails over here. Obviously, <laughs> I know this is a lot of rails, um, but it shouldn't be too expensive. And this goes to our uh, stock tracker. So whenever an item runs out, one of, one of these lights will turn off um, saying you need to stock that item. And the way it knows if an item is out of stock is that these comparators are detecting um, the items inside the dropper. It goes through this uh, torch line and it goes through here and it only detects um, or, or obviously it detects all the items uh, whether they're in stock or not but part of what makes this machine smart is that it only disables the system um, if one of the ingredients is out from the potion that you're currently making so um, let's say we are making a splash potion and the gunpowder is out then it would turn the system off light off meaning we can't brew a potion um, but let's say that we weren't using gunpowder in our recipe and the gunpowder is out. So even though the gunpowder is out, um, if we're not using gunpowder in our recipe, then it will still allow us to make a potion. So in contrast to my first machine, uh, my first machine actually wouldn't allow you to brew any potions whatsoever if any of the items were out. Uh, but that's not the case with this one. You can have as many uh, of these ingredients out of stock as you want just as long as the potion you're currently making um, as long as it has all the ingredients that's needed it will allow you to make it so so let's look at the number of potions panel there's a comparator behind this item frame a comparator behind the lever and i won't dig too much into all the hectic stuff that's going on here but basically we're transferring the signal strength all the way down to here into this system and kind of what this uh memory cell does is it that it is that it keeps track of how many potions we're going to brew. So you can see it's currently on signal strength nine. Um, that means we're gonna make, or, or we're gonna unlock all nine of the brewing stands um, because I actually had uh, the 27, I had this lever trigger before, um, but 
of course, the whatever uh, number that you have selected on here doesn't get input into the system until you actually start brewing the machine. Um, but yeah, once you start uh, brewing stuff, or once you turn on the machine, um, this hopper, or sorry, this comparator clock, um, it ticks down, so it will tick from 9 to 8, 8 to 7, and then to 6, 5, until the signal strength is completely gone, and that dictates how many uh, brewing stands we're unlocking. So something else we have is the glass bottle input. You can put glass bottles into here, and this goes into this hopper chain all the way down to here and it goes to our water, water bottle dispenser um, so you have all the glass bottles in these uh, droppers and then you have dispensers here um, and then there's a water here that makes the water bottles uh, when they're ready so these dispensers are empty um, but when we're triggering the machine these glass balls will get input and then it'll dispense fill with water and then they come down to here and they get input into uh, our water bottle input over here and those go into the brewing stands on this side so on this side we have water bottles coming in on this side we actually have the fuel coming in and on top we have our uh, ingredients that get dispensed into the system and of course this is where our rail is for the fuel input so whenever we want to input fuel we put it into the chest, and then we would dispense, or we press the button. So you'd click that, and it would, uh, if there was stuff to dispense into it, if uh, the uh, fuel was out, we'd be able to dispense this minecart, and then it would go down this rail, and then it would go over to here, and it would start dispersing the items until there were no more items in the cart. Uh, and yeah, that is uh, <laughs> pretty much a rough overview of the entire machine. So one other thing to mention is that the system doesn't actually allow itself to run. It doesn't allow you to brew potions unless all of the following conditions are true. So a recipe must be selected, the bottles must be stocked, the fuel must be stocked, the ingredients that you're using must be stocked, and brewing must not be in progress in order for you to hit this button and start brewing something. Um, and in addition to that, if something is currently uh, brewing, then you can change, you know, what potion you're making. You can change the modifiers, uh, but this won't. This information that you're selecting over here won't get input into the system until the brewing cycle is done. So this basically safeguards you from uh, breaking the machine. Um, it safeguards you from changing the inputs while it's currently operating. All right. So I hope that wasn't too terribly long-winded. Um, I know that that was still a very rough overview. I can't possibly go into detail about every little redstone line that's on here. Um, but I will try and help you out in building it if you want to build it. I know um, most of you watching this right now probably aren't going to build this. Um, but if you do, there will be a world download in the description. And I'll also have a schematic. Um, so first off, if you are going to build this, I'd recommend downloading Lightmatica. Um, and you could build it layer by layer, like you see over here. So you can start from the bottom, and then you can go up, and you can place these as you go. So see, I could start making this, and then I could go to the next layer. And let's pick our rails. And something to note about rails is that um, these will try and turn if you're making it, so you don't want that to happen. Um, but just make sure that all your rails are facing the correct direction. Um, this should be pretty easy to do. Um, but you know, if you're doing something like this and you try and do that, it'll turn like that. Um, you just want to start over here and then go up. And yeah, just make sure they're all facing the correct direction. So it um, shouldn't be too hard, but if you do encounter that issue, that's what you do. So you could so right now I'm using Lightmatica. You could uh, just go up from each layer, build each layer one at a time. Um, and it's important to note you have water, you know, where all the water is. Um, and of course, some of these hoppers and barrels and things will have items in them. So if you see that, you can hold down I and see what uh, things are in each hopper. Um, but also give you um, specific details on what you need to fill here at the end of the video. Um, so don't worry too much if you don't want to do that. 
Um, but yeah, Lightmatica is a really great option if you want to do this. Um, but yeah, let's move over to here. So in order to make this easy on myself, and in, in order to try and make this easy on you as well, I'm not going to do a block by block tutorial because honestly, that would be way too complicated. Um, that would take way too long for me. Um, but I have broken it down layer by layer over here. Um, so hopefully you'll be able to um, download this world and you can try and build it layer by layer. Um, so let's go over the necessary uh, stuff to build this. So first of all, you'll need at least 27 stacks of building blocks. You'll need some slabs, you'll need stairs, you'll need some other building blocks, some more slabs. Um, and yeah, you can basically just look at all the required stuff there. You need a whole bunch of chests and barrels and all of this. Here's all your redstone stuff. You'll need a whole bunch of uh, activator rails. You'll need some regular rails, some detector rails, some powered rails. Um, and you'll need a whole bunch of redstone block. Now, most of this will be redstone dust, but just for condensing purposes, I've condensed it down to redstone blocks for now. Um, and then also you need a whole bunch of observers, sticky pistons, hoppers, uh, plates. You need an oak button, or, or you need a wood button and a stone button. Um, and you need three dispensers, 32 droppers, and yeah, you can see everything that's there. Um, now, you need a whole bunch of wool. This isn't actually necessary. I just like it for color coding, so these could be any solid block if you want. You will need some glass. Um, a lot of this is actually necessary. Some of it isn't, but most of this is. Um, you'll need nine water buckets. You'll need some cake, uh, brewing stands, a uh, minecart with a chest, minecart with a hopper. And then up here, you'll need some filter items. You'll need a whole bunch of glass bottles. You'll need a whole bunch of blaze powder for fuel. And of course, not only do you need nether wart, you need all of the ingredients um, that you would want to use in your system. So you can input that into the system. And then you also need the ingredients for the item filters as well. So you'll want to take that into account. Um, you'll also need some additional filter items. You'll need an arrow for the item frame. You'll need 39 uh, item frames, doesn't matter if they're glow or not. Um, and then you'll also need uh, each different potion, um, so you can put these on the selector panel. Of course, you don't have to do that, you could use signs as well to indicate which um, options are which potion. Uh, but yeah, so you can pause the video on each of those while you get your items. And then we start off here. Okay, now before you get started building it, it's really important to know which direction you're facing. So I originally built this machine facing south. So if I'm facing the selector panel, I'm facing south. Uh, you could also be facing east. And really the directionality of it shouldn't matter too much. Um, there's just one small important thing to note is that if your selector panel is facing north or west instead, uh, you will have to change one of the rails down here. Uh, so this is a curved rail, and it's entirely dependent on which way the machine is facing. Uh, so again, if you're facing, if your selector panel is facing north, or it's facing west, then you'll need to come in here, remove this torch, and leave that block there. And I'll place rest some dust, and we'll remove this block as well. And so yeah, uh, if you're facing north or west, then this is what the setup should be like. But if you're facing south or east then you can just leave it with a torch like that. So this first platform here is 39 blocks long, so you'll want to start out here. So wherever you're going to put your panel, the leftmost part of it is gonna be here. And then you're starting with this one. This is one, two, three, and you'll go out 39 blocks. And then you have uh, seven redstone lamps here. You have two redstone lamps here. You have three planks, two planks, three planks, two redstone lamps, three planks, and eight planks over here. So just our different sections of the panel. And then um, we're gonna start with the first layer down here. So you're gonna go down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then you're gonna go down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. And then you'll place your block here. And this platform is 12 by six. And then you have a one block gap, and this platform is four by six. And that is our first layer. Of course, this wool isn't necessary. That's just to count it out. So let's move on to the second layer. You have your rails. You're gonna start to place your rails. And then you're gonna place this over here. 
and you're going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then you'll place a block here and place this shape. And yeah, I won't go too much into detail about every single layer, uh, but you're just going to copy this layer by layer. Um, you'll place your water. And then, yeah, just going all the way down. We'll worry about putting items into the uh, barrels and hoppers later. So you have each individual layer that you could copy. Um, just laid out over here. So let's go down to the end. All right, so once you're finished building all the layers, hopefully with not too much of an issue, um, you'll have several other things to do, like putting in items and putting stuff on the selector panel. Um, so one of the things you'll want to do is take your potions and uh, rename them to something or, or remove some of their names. So we're going to call this night vision and I'll put it here. That way we can see night vision. And of course, if you don't want to use all these potions, you could just put signs uh, instead. Um, but one of the most important things to uh, note is that um, it's very important that these are in this specific order. So it needs to be night vision and then invisibility, leaping, fire resistance, swiftness, slowness, water breathing, healing, harming, poison, regeneration, strength, weakness, and slow falling. So it has to be in that order. Otherwise, um, it's not going to work the way you want. Uh, something else you can also do is take these items in an anvil and rename them if you want to. Um, this is duration, this is strength, this is splash, and this is lingering. Um, and then of course you also need to input glass bottles. So right now this lamp is off, so meaning there's no glass bottles or meaning that the glass bottles are low. So we're going to go ahead and input these glass bottles. And uh, after a little while those will cycle in and this lamp will turn on. Uh, and something else you want to do is input your fuel. So we're going to go ahead and put that in. And I'll actually take some of this for right now. And then we can go ahead and click that button and it will start dispersing. Of course, we didn't get all the items loaded in yet. But yeah, that will start dispersing. And let's go ahead and look back at it. Right now, it's just bursting the fuel to all of the uh, brewing stands. Oops. And something important to do is that you need to come over here and put uh, 64 blaze powder in that. So this has to be 64 blaze powder. And then you have to have some blaze powder in here. So in order for the machine to detect that it has fuel, it needs to be able to have blaze powder in this hopper, meaning that that brewing stand needs to be full of blaze powder, and this needs to have some blaze powder in it. And uh, yeah, that will just continue dispersing the blaze powder until it's empty, and then eventually it will come back, and we can pick up more of these. Um, and yeah, all right. So next, what we're going to do is that we're going to fill in our item filters. So on the very first one here, we're going to have 41 netherwort and then four filter items. I would recommend taking sticks or whatever you're using and retitling them to placeholder or filter or whatever. Just something that's not going to uh, get disturbed by other items flowing in. So yeah, 41 netherwort and your four filter items. Uh, the next one, same deal, except you're using blaze powder. The next one is magma cream. And then golden carrots. Rabbit's foot. Sugar. Pufferfish, Glistering Melon Slice, Phantom Membrane, Gas Tear, Spider Eye, Fermented Spider Eye, and then you'll have a gap. Uh, and this first one needs to be Redstone Dust, and then Glowstone Dust, Gunpowder, and Dragon's Breath. And then what you can do is you can go down to your system down here and go into your ingredient input. And we're going to toss in all the ingredients that you need. So that would be all of these. Um, and then, so I'm just going to toss in the nether wart. And then this light's currently off, but here in a moment it should turn on, saying that it's in stock. And there we go. And next, what we're going to do is we're going to come over to our selector panel. 
and we're going to come over to our hoppers, our hopper pairs. There shouldn't be any items in any of these. And we're just going to put one stackable item in each of these. And don't worry if you hear anything. I'm just going to put just a single one in each. So there should be seven hoppers in a line here. And then you also have your filter, or sorry, your modifier items. And put one stick. It really doesn't matter what you put in here as long as it's one stackable item. And then we're going to come down to the bottom, come to these hoppers, I put one here, and I could just toss this in, so I'll put one, or no I can't, oops. I'll put one item here, I'll put one, on, one item here, one item here, one item here, So put in the modifiers over here and that should be it for the selector panel so once you've put all those items in into each hopper uh, something you need to make sure is that all of these blocks are down so they're right on top of the sticky piston as well as these ones these need to be right on top of the sticky piston uh, that way it indicates that the selection is off um, and then you also need to make sure that all these lights are off so if all these lights are off, um, all these blocks should be down, all these blocks should be down, um, as well as the modifiers. These redstone blocks, they need to be uh, out here, uh, touching the sticky pistons so they're not um, being output into here. Um, so yeah, they should be over here. And then we also have our selectors over here, so each one of these droppers needs a single item. So we're going to do that. All right, and once you've double checked that each of these droppers has one item in it, you can move on to the next thing. All right, so the next thing you'll want to do is come over to your hopper timers. We're gonna put 23 items in this bottom one and 51 items up here. And then you'll hear the system resetting because we put items in there. Um, and that basically, what that's doing is that uh, when the potions are done brewing, um, all the items will flow back into here and it will trigger um, and it will basically refresh all the uh, selected items. Um, and that just allows us to make sure that everything is reset and in the proper position. And uh, yeah, so you need the 23 items down here, 23 stackable items, and then 51 stackable items there on the top hopper. And next, what you're going to want to do is come over to here, to these comparator things, place a lever and power it if it's not already powered. Uh, you just need this to be fully powered, that way it's powering this whole redstone line. Um, and then this is where our water bottles go. So um, you will want to pre-stock the water bottles, that way it's going into the system. So you could come over to here or anywhere and just start putting in your water bottles. Um, it's just important to pre-stock it, that way it always has enough water bottles. And then you can have the glass bottle, uh, glass bottle water filler do the rest. And this is where our water bottle filler is. So you can see there's water and there's a actually like a waterlogged stair here. Um, and something important to do here is that you need to make sure these redstone dots, they are dots. You need to make sure, make sure they're not crosses. So if they're crosses, they're gonna interfere with this. Um, if they're crosses here, it's gonna interfere with the hoppers, so on and so forth. Just make sure these are dots and not crosses. And then something else you also need to do these cakes, I'm sure you probably already see, saw it in the layers if you're building this, um, but each of these cakes needs four bites taken out, so just place down the cake and then uh, right click it four times, and that uh, goes for the cake over here as well, let's see if I can find it, there's a cake here, take four bites out of this one, and yeah. Now over here again we have our chest minecart, this goes on top of the powered rail here, and you need to make sure that there is a solid block behind it, that way it can get launched. Um, if not, it won't get launched. So yeah, just make sure this is a solid block. And then over here, um, you'll see these barrels, and each one of these needs a single item, so you can put a single stick if you want, and uh, this one as well, a single stick, and that will um, output a comparative signal of one, a signal strength of one. Um, and that basically allows us to um, decrement the signal strength when we need to, and that's for counting the potions that we're making. 
yeah, that should be just about everything. So um, just make sure that all your uh, repeaters in the machine are set to the correct delay. Make sure that all the comparators are set to the proper mode. Say this one is in subtract mode, that one's in uh, not in subtract mode. And so yeah, just make sure everything um, is correct. Um, and that should be pretty much everything if you're building this. Um, something else is the note blocks. This is just a small little thing. Uh, but this note block here is set to note zero, so um, just place it down, should be fine. This one you can place down and set it to note three. Uh, so you'll right click it three times. This one will be six. This will be note nine. Um, and this one over here is note six. And yeah, that should be just about everything. All the other note blocks uh, are set to zero. You should pay special attention to all the observers. Make sure they're pointing the correct directions uh, anywhere that you find them. Uh, make sure that all your droppers are facing the correct direction. They should be going down into the barrels. Um, you know, pay special attention to where all the hoppers are pointing. Make sure you're using dispensers in the correct spot. So there should be three dispensers as part of the water ball filler. And then everything else uh, is a dropper. And yeah, that should be pretty much everything. Again, if you're building this, I sincerely wish you good luck. Um, and I'm sorry I couldn't do a block by block tutorial. It's just way too complicated. Uh, and big for me to do that uh, but yeah hopefully you should uh, have it working and in order to test that it works we can go ahead and select one of our things let's select regeneration um, and then we get a little ding um, if all our ingredients are stocked and everything over here is stocked um, we could make you know 24 potions 18 potions let's do that and in order to test it we'll go ahead and hit the button Hit that going back and forth and so yeah let's just wait and see if those potions come out and something else you can do you can see there's like kind of an air gap there that you might be able to see through that if you want to you can go ahead and cover this up there and yeah you can kind of block that off if you want um, so yeah just a little bit longer for the regeneration potions and oh no I <laughs> I have no potions in my output what did I do wrong um, you will probably encounter um, some issues as well, so you need to go ahead and diagnose. Oh, hey look, the uh, chest minecart didn't dispense. I wonder why that is. Okay, so I guess it must have just been a fluke. Um, because I pressed the button again and it worked. Um, after taking the ingredients out, of course. So now we have regeneration potions being brewed. And they should come out in the output down here momentarily. And here they come. Very nice. You can see it flashes, saying there's items coming in. And then it will turn solid. And we have our 18 potions of regeneration, just as I requested you right here, 18 potions. So it works beautifully. I'm very happy. Now, obviously, if you're going to build this, it may not be all sunshine and rainbows for you. You may encounter problems, uh, in which case uh, you can join my Discord server, and I will try and help you out if I'm not too busy. Um, but yeah, I know the machine is quite big and complicated, um, so you may have some issues, but hopefully uh, you're able to sort it out yourself. Um, and again, there will be a world download and a Lightmatica schematic in the description. And I hope you enjoyed. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, yeah, it's taken me... I mean, this machine took me quite a while to uh, figure out to build. And yeah, I'm just glad to finally have made a video about it. Hopefully it wasn't too long and convoluted. Uh, but yeah, that is usually the case with my redstone builds. They're big. Uh, well, not necessarily all the time. Anyway, this is probably the biggest, most complex machine I've ever made and I don't really want to make anything like this again uh, but yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed hopefully um, this is really cool to you make sure to leave a like leave a comment and again I have a discord server if you need help um, and yeah thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video have a good one